Hi guys, this is Kim from best-acupuncture.com and I help you maintain and recover your mental, emotional, and physical health naturally. We are back to Chinese nutritional therapy and this meal helps rebuild the stomach and eliminate phlegm. Guess what? I am going back to the 13th century and the Song Dynasty. Have you ever wondered what the average person ate in the past and how it tasted and how they thought about food? I have. I'm going to go back to 1250 AD and two recipes from a recipe book called Shan Jia Qing Gong. I don't speak Chinese, so I am apologizing in advance for poor pronunciation. There is a number of ways this title is translated, and the most common is the simple food of the mountain folk. But the one that seems the most accurate is the simple offerings of a mountain hermit. And why that seems more accurate is because the author Lin Hong was a hermit during the Song Dynasty. And here's the thing. His recipes are really unexpected. The thing that is going to hit you as I step through the two recipes is simplicity. And when I read the recipes, the simplicity had me judging the book by the cover and severely underestimating Lin Hong's genius. So there's this creativity and beauty in these recipes that I wasn't expecting. And What's even crazier is these are things that you and I can easily make and they're crazy tasty. So I'm going to show you the recipes and I'm going to start making them and I'll tell you why I made the decisions I did because I kind of want to believe that I'm going to make these dishes as close to what they were back then. So we'll go from there. The two recipes are going to be peach rice and golden chicken. Here's the recipe for peach rice. And what I can tell is there are two main ingredients I need, peaches and rice. And I think I need two peaches. And I'm making a guess that mountain peaches, they were probably smaller than the peaches that we have today. So maybe I just need two peaches. Oh, and look, there are only two peaches left in the whole store. So let me just grab those. Okay, and I'm going to need rice. I'm going to get brown rice because it is less processed. And a hermit back in 1200 AD would probably be eating unhulled rice because that was the cheapest rice at the time. Now, we don't have unhulled rice today. And white rice was the most expensive rice at that time and a luxury item for the wealthy. So I definitely won't be making this with white rice. So let's see here. I'm going to get brown basmati rice because that rice is not only great for building energy like all rice is, but this one also helps rebuild the stomach. Okay, so there's my two main ingredients. I'm going to rinse the rice and you're actually supposed to boil the peaches in the water used to rinse the rice. I'm not sure why, but the rice is organic, so I guess I'll do it. Okay, according to the instructions, I'm reading this first boil of peaches and then you're supposed to take the pits out and cook them with rice. So again, I'm not sure why I had to do the initial boil in rice. It would be either to remove the skin or soften the peaches to make it easier to remove the pits. And I think the peaches were smaller and hardier back then. So I think they had to boil them to remove the pits. But, you know, boiling today's peaches to the point that they're soft enough to remove the pits would also boil out all the flavor. So. I'm just going to boil them to remove the skin. And then I'm going to cut them up and I'm going to use something I know that they didn't have back then in Instapot. And I'm going to do that to make sure I have the perfect rice and I don't burn. 
it on the bottom of my pot. So here's something that's not in the recipe. You know, they said make rice. So I'm guessing they mean to the people make the rice the way you make the rice. I added in oil and bouillon at three teaspoons per two cups of water. So in the Instapot, it's one to one rice to water. And it doesn't matter what type of rice you're cooking in the Instapot, it's always one to one because it's pressure sealed. So you're not gonna lose water during cooking and for brown basmati rice, it's going to be 22 minutes cooking and then you're going to just let it naturally decompress for another 15 minutes. Okay, the rice is going, so let's look at the golden chicken. And here's the recipe. A bit brief, huh? Not many ingredients. There's chicken, sesame seed oil, salt, water, green onions, and peppers. So now it was just selecting the ingredients. And if you saw my part four of the food labeling series, why you want to avoid skinless chicken, I limited my selections to all natural skin on chicken. And that of course is gonna be closer to what they were eating in ancient China. I picked up green onions and you know what? I was actually gonna get green peppers. But then I realized the peppers they were probably talking about were those small red chili peppers, the Chinese red peppers. So not much information and not many ingredients and chili peppers with water and salt doesn't read as something very flavorful. So you've got your ingredients and you still have to figure out how you're going to cook this. You know, are you going to cook it in an oven, over a fire, on a grill? Well, I decided on a Dutch oven because they always had those big soup pots and it just seemed like this was gonna go into some type of pot. So I made a selection, I have a pot. So now what? And there's something that kept on bugging me and that's my friends, my Chinese friends from China would always say, their chicken was so much more flavorful because, you know, it's not factory farmed or overprocessed. And I'm thinking that in 1250 AD, their chickens got to be a lot more tasty than mine. And that has me worried because the recipe sounds pretty blah. So I'm going to try and boost up the flavor. I'm going to wash my chicken, pat it dry, and add salt to the chicken. Then I'm actually going to sear mine in the Dutch oven to lock in the flavors and also to get chicken fat to saute the spices. And I'm really concerned that my chicken isn't going to be as flavorful and I'm going to need more flavor. So I decided to add in another half onion and two cloves of garlic. So I know these were two common ingredients in ancient China, and you even see them mentioned in the Han Dynasty, which was 221 BC to 250 AD. And I'm going to saute these onions and garlic and the chicken fat along with the peppers. And I'm going to do that, you know, for three to five minutes until the onions are a bit translucent and... Okay, I'm gonna add in a cup of water. You know, I had to decide how much water I was gonna use. I could use a lot or use a little. I mean, this doesn't sound very flavorful as it is, so I'm not gonna use a lot of water. There's no need for me to dilute the flavor any more than it is. And I'm gonna add in two ounces of sesame seed oil, the green onions, and place six eyes on top of everything. Then I'm gonna cover it up and cook it on a low medium heat. So my oven or my stove top is set to four. I kept on checking on it and the whole thing took about 20 minutes to cook. So what does all this mean from a Chinese nutritional therapy perspective? You know, what are these ingredients doing for you? Well, you know, I said earlier that this recipe this chicken recipe is going to help with phlegm, and if you want to refresh your on phlegm, check out the episodes 
what is phlegm in Chinese medicine and lose the impossible weight in five minutes a day breaking up phlegm. Right now, phlegm's a big focus for me. And in Chinese nutritional therapy, foods are going to be categorized into five, sometimes six different flavors. And each of these flavors are associated with different health benefits. So chicken, the flavor is bland and bland foods help remove excess fluids in the body. So chicken helps when you have that plumped up feeling like a blueberry. The recipe also has spices and vegetables, and they have a flavor that's called pungent. And those are gonna be the chili, the green onion, and the onion. And pungent foods all help move chi. So that's another really good one for phlegm because phlegm just likes sitting there and stopping everything from moving. And then you have sesame seed oil. So in Chinese medicine, most of the seed oils are considered to help relieve constipation. And how they say it in Chinese medicine is the oil moistens the intestines. So here you have this recipe and its whole focus is on moving and eliminating toxins in the body. So this recipe is really tight, it's compact, it has absolutely no wasted movement, giving it a simplicity that even I can make. And that's why I said at the start of this episode, his recipes, there's this genius to them. And when I couple that with the peach rice recipe, where the whole recipe is focused on rebuilding your body, it's just an amazing combination. Recipes with no wasted movements. Okay, but let's see here. How does it taste? That's what made this whole menu even more amazing. This menu is amazingly delicious. The chicken, okay, the broth, it tastes like this really good high-end chicken stock. And the chicken, because you didn't overboil it and cooked it in water, it's super succulent. And I just wasn't expecting it. It was like four ingredients. How could it taste that good? And then there's a rice. And because I use brown rice, it just has this really nutty, hearty flavor to it. And because the peaches were cooked in the rice, they have this mild taste that doesn't overpower anything. And I really love the hardiness that the brown rice had. It just had such a depth to the rice. You know, so sometimes white rice can have a real shallow, empty flavor to it. Not with this brown rice. So for me, this menu is a 10. Ling Hong is a food genius and his recipes are so focused and simple. And he targets a specific health benefit in each of his recipes with the clarity of a genius. So I'm gonna do more recipes from Ling Hong. Okay, that's it for this episode. And until next time, I'm gonna catch you on the other side.